this webinar. Whoops. All right. And hopefully you guys can see my screen. Let me just get the settings correct here. Perfect. All right. Someone reach out on the question marks if you can't uh, see my screen. Perfect. All right. I hope you're all doing away well today. Uh, my name is Grant Finley Sheriff. I'm the CEO of Park Bench. Um, let's just keep this appearing with me today. All right. So let's minimize this control panel. Um, so, you know, um, Park Bench, I mean, we're, we're a very content-based platform, um, and uh, we've had to learn a lot about how to create content that people want to read, that people are searching online, um, and the best practices that we've learned, I'm going to be teaching you all today so that on your own website, um, or if you're a client with us, um, you can now have better content that drives more awareness to who you are and that helps develop your brand as an expert in a certain area, at a certain types of homes, at a certain demographic, and that ultimately leads to more business, right? So some people and realtors fight with this idea that, hey, can you know, blogging and social media, you know, actually help my business grow? And it definitely can. And I think it's one of the best investments that a realtor can make. Um, I've been uh, doing content myself. So before I started Park Bench, I was in fitness, right? So it's a service-based business, just like real estate. And I use content all the time uh, to help me get new business. When I very first started out uh, in a gym, I would actually create content um, and hand it out to people uh, in the gyms. And then some people said, wow, you know, I've read a couple of your articles. You really seem to know what you're talking about. You know, can I buy a first package with you, right? If you guys are in real estate and whether you create flyers with content on it, your website with content on it, if you can start to get that out to your target market, then it's going to help you um, demonstrate yourself as an expert and that will lead uh, to more business as it's done for myself um, and for other people. Where is my cursor? All right. So here's an overview uh, for what we're going to do today. Um, first, when it comes to content is you want to talk about uh, your goals, right? So I've seen a lot of realtors out there just kind of do whatever comes to their head and that's okay because it gets getting them to, you know, write um, or get someone else to write versus not. Um, but you really should have an actual strategy laid out that is aligned with your goals as a realtor. Um, then uh, I'm going to talk about some of the problems that I've seen uh, the realtors face um, and uh, try to, you know, lay out some of the solutions um, to that. Then we're going to talk about um, some more in-depth strategy when it comes to content um, and how you should formulate what is written about on your website um, and on your social media. Then we'll talk about creating the content, right? There is a better way of writing a blog and doing social media posts versus others. Um, and so I'm going to give you some of those tips to talk about how to create killer marketing content. Um, once you've created the content, the next thing you got to do is you got to optimize it, right? This is another step that a lot of people don't do. Um, where is my mouse? Oh, sorry. Uh, it's a it's a one step that people don't seem to do very well because you know you can't see optimization. It is something that happens on the back end. Um, but if you want your content to be found on Google, and if you want uh, to get the most bang for your effort or for your buck if someone else is doing it for you optimization is key once you've now created the content you've optimized it now you've got to promote it right so another thing i've seen realtors create this content they pay to get this content up on their website and then it just sits there 
right? And the whole point of you doing it all is that you promote it, right? You let people know that it exists. Um, and so um, we're going to talk about how uh, you can optimally promote it with your networks um, in the most efficient way possible. The last two areas is, is um, you know, you've set up those campaigns, you've executed it well. And the one thing that is, is scientific about marketing is the analysis, right? So marketing is all about trial and error. And as much as I, you know, I will try to give you best practices and other people might try to give you best practices, at the end of the day, uh, you need to find what works best for you and your target market. And then analyzing how your content is doing will give you the path that you need to take so that you make better content the next time around that drives more people to your website, that drives more clicks on search engines, and that is more in line with the needs and wants of the prospects that you're trying to get in front of. And then once you figure this out, or it's this endless process of completing a campaign, analyzing, and repeating. Complete a campaign, analyze, make some adjustments, repeat. And if you do it over and over and over again, it is going to start working um, better and better. Uh, and the thing about content is once you do it once and once you do it once and well, then you'll be able to see the fruits uh, forever. Let me just quickly change this. Okay. Interesting. Are you guys seeing my screen? I can't see your screen. Okay. Um, I just want to double check here. Okay. Uh, let me reopen this thing. All right. Somebody give me some feet. Somebody give me some feedback here. Is everyone seeing my screen now? Can someone type in and say yes? All good. Perfect. All right. Away we go again. Cool. So that was an overview. Uh, so let's dig in uh, to the first thing that comes uh, that you need to start thinking about is goals. Because without a goal, you'll just be aimlessly doing work right? without an actual end result. And so your goals could be you want to get more clients and get more referrals. That's usually a pretty standard one. Uh, another standard goal is that you want to use content to increase traffic to your website. Okay. Um, the next one is you want to create good content so that people actually spend time on your website because all service-based businesses are based around relationships and relationships are only built over time and so your goal in all your marketing whether you're doing it offline and online and so especially for content is you want to create something that is engaging that makes people spend time on your website and by spending more time with you and your brand online, that strengthens your relationship with that person. That strengthens their perception of you as an expert, as a credible source, someone that's trustworthy and someone that they want to work with. Okay. Your goal, I mean, I don't know if you've, if you've done any Google searching for some keywords that you want to show up in. Um, your goal may be that you want to show up on that first page. You see your competition up there and you're like, you know, God dang it, I want to be up there. And that's the number one thing about search engines, about how to get on Google, is content. The people who have more content that's unique, that's informative and useful and shared on social media and that is properly organized and optimized, they're the ones that are going to be showing up on the search engines. Um, and so these are some of the goals that having a good content marketing strategy can help with. Okay. The final goal, this is the one that is a little bit subjective, right? This is the one where you need to fill in the blank here, 
Okay, so you should be thinking about how you can use content to enhance your reputation as blank. So this is where you may want to put down an expert for so-and-so neighborhood. This is where you want to put down a condo expert, a multifamily expert, a funny person, a a uh, family-oriented person, right? Here are the key words that you can really pick how you want to be perceived and then create content that reinforces that perception. And so this is the beauty about online and the beauty about content is you can really become who you want online and get the results that you want based on what you're trying to become. Okay, and so I've seen a lot of problems when I've talked to realtors about their content strategy or just looked online when it comes to it. And the biggest problem, first off, is they just don't have any, right? So I don't know how much content you have on your website, but take a good hard look and compare yourself to everybody else and say, do I even have that much content on my website about homes, about the schools, the demographics, the people, the events, the activities, the businesses, the things that home buyers or home sellers want to know. Do I have a lot of that content on my website right now? And a lot of the times, realtors don't. And, in, and for good reason, you know, their reasons are I don't have time, okay, is, is something that they say. Or I don't have the budget to get some professional to do it. Okay. Now, sometimes these constraints are real. But when you think about where are you spending your time? And how is that going? And where are you spending that money? And how is that going? It might get you to realize that some of the things that you've been doing aren't yielding very good results. Or some of the things you've been spending money on aren't yielding the results that you thought they would. And so might, you might want to try something new. Okay, so lack of content is one big problem. The other one is quality. All right, so I bet if you went to five real estate websites and looked at the content on their blogs, there's usually a section that says buyers, and then there's three to five articles under them, and then sellers, and there's three to five articles under them. And if you copy and pasted a paragraph or a sentence from that person's blog and put it in Google, you would see that it is copied from some other website, and probably multiple times over. So the quality of the content is really bad on people's websites. The other thing I've seen is people have putting the format of the content so that the search engines have no idea it exists. So a little tip, Google, Yahoo, Bing, and every search engine, they do not see pictures all that well. The only thing they see about a picture is the file name. And you can't put a whole blog in a file name for an image. And so people have put types of content and have hidden it in a way that the search engines have no idea it exists. Right? All search engines see are numbers, letters, words, um, and code. And so if your blogs are not structured in a certain way, uh, in a certain hierarchy, they're not going to get found very easily. The final area that I've seen realtors struggle with when it comes to quality is how what, what the content is about. So I've seen some realtors who on their websites, their blog is a testimonial. Okay. Now, People online are not searching, show me testimonials of home buyers. Or if they are, they're looking for testimonials about you as a realtor, and you've already got them. 
So they don't necessarily need to be a blog, right? Or a blog about uh, the house, right? Again, people are on home searches looking for houses. They're not necessarily uh, searching the exact address to see blogs about the house. But you know what people are searching for? Is they want to know about the schools in an area. What are the people like in an area? What are the things to do in this area? What are the restaurants in this area? I'm moving to this neighborhood and I want to learn about these things. And there are some technologies out there that show you what people are searching for. And then all you got to do is write about it. And you are now going to be putting yourself in a position to be found because the research is saying this is what people are searching for. Okay, so targeting your content is really important. Um, and that comes with strategy. All right, so now we're getting into the strategy component. So before you start spinning your wheels, and spending your time, or spending your money on content, you want to come up with a strategy. Okay, now you know, we do this for our clients, um, you know, and you can have maybe you have a marketing person who, who should be doing this for you, um, but it's not all that hard. Um, and I'm going to teach you right now uh, some of the questions that you need to ask yourself so that you can figure out a strategy for your content marketing. Okay, so first figure out what your focus is going to be. Okay, because you as a realtor, I guarantee you've got some geographic area that you want more business in okay write those areas down write the zip code postal code of that area write the names of the neighborhoods in that area write the big intersections of that area because this is the information that people are searching about online and if you can have information about that area you're going to start popping up in front of the people who are looking for content about that geographic region okay the second piece of focus you want to ask yourself is who are your clients okay are they people young professionals first time home buyers are they um, families moving into a new home because they have now have kids are they relocating are they uh, moving up because they're uh, now more successful they're in their 40s 50s and 60s are they downgrading because their kids have moved out um, who are your clients what income demographic are they uh, what ethnic group are they because again these people are searching for things online and you want to start developing relationships with them by spending time in front of them so even if you're writing content about something that has nothing to do with real estate, if you can get in front of these people and be cool or useful or funny or insightful um, because you're giving them information they're looking for before they even think about a home, and if you can stay in front of them and capture their email after sending them that first blog about you know, places to go you know, when you've now got a kid – Right to have fun, then when they're thinking about upgrading, who stayed in front of them the longest? Who's provided them the most useful information? And if it's you, there's a good chance that person might use you or at least refer you business. Okay, so you've got your geography, you've got your clients. Then you want to think about your your type of real estate. Are you doing condos, lofts, single and detached uh, homes, duplexes? triplexes, you know, luxury estate properties, okay? Again, there is content that needs to be created for certain types of houses. And if you know what you want to focus on, then you can start to hone in on those keywords where there's less competition, okay? One of the things I'll start talking about is just like realtors farm an area or try to focus because they think I can win by focusing on this neighborhood and this kind of people, you want to do that online too because your thousands of competitors in your market are online. They are creating content, but they're not all creating the same type of content. So if you can find your niche, the whole, the, the content 
hole in the market that you want to farm, you're going to now win and show up on that first page because you'll do it better than everybody else. Okay. And finally, the last thing you want to think about when you're talking about strategy is the keywords. Okay. So I'll show you some tools. This tool on the right here is a software uh, that we've purchased. It's called SE Cockpit. Write that one down. S E Cockpit. Okay. You do have to pay for it, but it provides research that shows you here are the keywords that people are searching for. Here's the volume of searches. And here's the competition, right? That bar on the right side shows what's the competition to be on the first page uh, for this keyword. So as you can see, you know, MLS Realty or uh, Vancouver Houses for Sale has got a thousand hits in a month, right? The competition's, you know, reasonable, but, um, uh, and it's a whole lot easier to show up for Vancouver Houses for Sale than it is for, you know, MLS real estate listings or MLS Realty, okay? Um, and so you can plug your keywords into here like uh, Baby Boomers or uh, Yorkville, Toronto or uh, Condos, and it will tell you the keywords that people are searching for online regarding that focus that you have and which specific keyword people are searching for and right now on the first page no one's doing it very well so there's that chance for you to do it well and then get in front of the people that are interested in that topic who are your prospects demonstrate value and hopefully um, get a sale out of it okay the second piece of strategy after you figure out what you're going to target is type okay so there's lots of news brands out there that next time you look at a magazine, next time you look at a news article or a blog that you read constantly, look at look at the type of article they've wrote. Look at the headline. What kind of article is it? And you'll see a lot of the time how-to articles, best of articles, top 10, top 20, you know, lists and comparisons are the most common p types of content that people like, they like to read, and therefore you should be going after, right? How to buy a home in downtown Toronto. Comparing real estate properties in this neighborhood versus this neighborhood. What are the best restaurants in the east side of Vancouver, right? These are all these things that those could be your blog topics and those are uh, commonly clicked on, shared amongst friends on social media. And so those are the types uh, that you can be doing, okay? Finally, uh, when it comes to strategy, is uh, the longevity of your content, all right? This is another big mistake I've seen is okay so if you write a blog about this article you want to do this big profile about this property okay look at this amazing property that i have on sale this amazing neighborhood you know it's priced this much here's everything about it here are the things in the neighborhood you know for people who are interested in this property once that property is sold that article is dead which means the time or the money you spent on that article has a very short lifespan. And when it comes to marketing, it's all about ROI, return on investment. So if you can create content that is what they call evergreen or timeless, right? This is content that it doesn't matter if the person's reading it in a day in a week, in a year, it's a useful article, which means you can re-promote that article a week later, a month later, a year later, and continue to get traffic and benefit for it. 
right? So I highly recommend if you're only going to do a low amount of content, focus on evergreen, timeless content. You will get the best bang for your buck. If you are committed to doing lots of content because the value is there, right? One of the top realtors in Toronto, Josie Stern, has tens of thousands of people go to her website every single month. And she has one of the top blogs in Toronto. And lo and behold, no one touches her in her market. Hillcrest Village, and Regal Heights, and in the surrounding area. And everybody knows who she is because everybody reads her blogs because it's amazing to read. So insightful and funny and useful. If you're committed to doing that because it's worth it, then you can start focusing on trending topics. Okay, so you can go online, you can go on Google, Google Trends, Google, Google Trends, and you will get access to their tool that tells you what is trending, right? And so here is where you can find out what people right now are searching for. So if it's politics, if it's election time, people might be searching for that content. And if you can have content on your site about that, you're now going to pop up on the search engines because there's probably not that many people focusing on that trending topic and now you've got a person in your target market on your website with your brand going thank you for sharing this thank you for writing this okay so if you're committed to doing content marketing on a larger scale then you can start focusing on trending topics where the lifespan is short but if you hit it well you're going to get a great bang for your buck Okay, because people are wanting that information at that time. All right, so now you've got your strategy. All right, the next thing to think about is creating the content. Okay, now who is going to do it? Well, it could be you, could be your assistant, maybe you have a marketing person, or maybe you hire a professional. Okay, if, uh, you know, there's different, you know, if you're a newer realtor and, and you don't have a big budget, right, then, then yes, you should probably do it. Um, if you're a, more of a successful realtor who's been around for 5, 10, 15 years and you have a budget, you don't have the time, uh, then you can definitely hire a, a professional and they are worth it, okay? If you're going to do it, there's two ways of doing content effectively, okay? Because, again, another issue I've seen with realtors is they don't have time or they get started and then they stop uh, and they never keep up with it and then it makes you look even worse, right? Nothing is worse than going to someone's website and seeing that the last thing that was posted was a year ago or two years ago or three years ago, okay? It makes you look amateur, okay, um, and don't do it, okay? So you need to pick what you're going to do. And you could either do content in batches or you can figure out a consistent plan to do it. All right, you gotta figure out what is right for you, but decide and do it, okay? Whether you wanna say every Sunday, I'm gonna write one blog, or even if it's once a month, on the first day of the month, I will write a blog. Just once, on the first day of every month, that's still consistent. And people reward people for consistency. The universe rewards people for consistency. Okay. The other way of doing it, because if you write evergreen content, if you write content that a person can read in a month's time or six months' time or a year's time and it's valuable, then you do not have to write that content that the person sees in six months' time. In six months' time, you can write it now. So you can, the another best way of doing content, and we do this, this is how Park Bench does it. We do an all-out assault on a day. We write as many blogs as we possibly can in one day based on our strategy, and then we schedule it all out, right? How many other people have you heard do this on social media? I spend one day a week, I write out my tweets, I write out my posts, I put it on Hootsuite or some scheduler, and then I let it go out for the rest of the week, and now I'm done, I don't have to think about it, okay? So I highly recommend you either pick to do it consistently week in, week out, or month in, month out, or go all out and write as many as you can in one day, schedule them out until you know when your next day you can do that all out blog assault, okay? 
when you're thinking about content uh, creation, the last uh, few things is how, right? How to create that content, not just when and who, but how, and 400 words or more. Okay, that is the magic number that Google has in their algorithm that says, I will give extra points if it's 400 words or more. And I know people think, oh, people don't like to read a lot, you know, so like 300 to 500 words, you know. Um, the statistics show that longer is better, that articles that are 1,500 or more words are shared more, they're liked more, because they want to reward people for that effort. Good, long articles are better. They may not get read by as many people, but they will be shared by more, um, and that provides more value. Okay. Um, finally, make sure you put media into your blogs okay now that images and videos are easy to come by put them in everyone loves pictures and videos put them in your blog um, you can find them on google images or find them on youtube um, or create them yourself make sure there's media because again the search engines reward blogs or content that has media in it after you've created the content, now you've got to optimize it. Okay, so I'm not going to get into too much in depth here because it can kind of get um, technical. And it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be confusing. It's actually really quite simple. One, make sure there's no spelling mistakes. Two, make sure the keyword that you want to target is in the title. All right, so if you're writing about the schools in your neighborhood, don't say, you know, amazing places for your kids in the, in the title of your thing or some weird topic, right? If you want to focus on a keyword, make it sure it's in the title and make sure it's in the first and the last sentence of your article because the search engines place a hierarchy of rank and influence to start to rank and categorize blogs. They first look at the title because clearly if the words are in the title, that must be what the blog is about. Then they look next to the first and the last sentence because that again, if your keywords are in the first and the last sentence, you're telling the search engines, I'm focusing on this better than other people who do not put these keywords in the first and last sentence. So please rank me higher because of this, okay? Then break up your content with headlines because if someone once gets, gets a social media notification or an email and you said, hey, check out this cool article I wrote on, you know, the best, um, you know, parks uh, in the city, they may go, hey, cool, click on it on their phone, and then quickly skim through it to make sure they might want to read it and save it for later. And so if you have headlines within your text, it helps people skim through articles and know what you're talking about and make it show that it's useful and easy to read and so that they save it for later and then come back and spend time with your brand on your website, which builds relationships, which gets you deals. But these headlines also tell the search engines other areas of focus for your article. Therefore, where else put other searches to put your, your article in when people are online? Okay, so put headlines. When you're uploading your images or your, or your uh, YouTube videos, okay, or if you want to check to see if your assistant or marketing person is doing things properly, ask them, hey, when you upload pictures and videos to the blog, are you putting the keywords for the blog on the file name for that image and for that video? Because again, the search engines have no idea what that picture is um, or what that video is by, they don't see things. All they see is file names. Okay, and the text behind the image and behind the video. So make sure that 
when you're uploading an image, say you're writing that article about, you know, the parks in Toronto, you can say, oh, here's a picture of Trinity Bellwoods. So I'm going to name my picture Trinity Bellwoods Park Toronto. And if you want, you can add uh, your name as a realtor um, and brokerage in there, right? You can stuff the file name a little bit with keywords that you want to show up for. Okay, and then finally, links. Okay, so the two biggest things that search engines uh, reward people for, and the reason why people rank is because they've got uh, content, lots of content, unique content that is uh, new and refresh and continually added new content, and links. Because what links do is they show whether people are linking to your content, therefore providing social proof that, hey, this article is fantastic. You guys should check it out, right? Hey, guys, like I read this cool article about, you know, uh, the five thing, myths, you know, when you're, when you're buying a home. And for all my friends out there who are buying a home, I'm on Facebook right now. Check out this cool article. OK, or um, the more people that do that. Right. And if you can get your links on Wikipedia or other websites out there, that's affirming that your content is good. And that tells the search engines, well, hey, here's this realtor who writes about, you know, uh, the schools in this neighborhood. And here's another realtor who writes about the schools in this neighborhood. But this article, other people are linking to it. So that must mean it's better. So I'm going to put that one higher than everybody else's, right? That's literally how search engines think, okay? So uh, get outbound links, right? And as well, don't be a hog. Give inbound links because search engines, again, want to reward people for trying to help direct people to information. Right, So if you on your article are mentioning this business or mentioning this park and mentioning uh, this, um, you know, political figure or whatever, right? If that park has a page on some other website or a picture on Google, if that business has their own website, if that, you know, a political figure has a profile on some website, link to it, right? When you when you write that sentence of like you know I love you know going to uh, the Smokes Poutinery in Liberty Village late at night when you mention Smokes Poutinery make that word a hyperlink and then direct people to Smokes Poutinery's website all right yes you are going to be helping Smokes Poutinery's SEO but the search engines also want to reward you for trying to actually help other people find more information if they're interested, okay? So try and get inbound links, but also give inbound links, okay? So now you've optimized your website or now your, your, your marketing guy has done it. Now you've got to promote this content, okay? And any social channel that you're using, use it, all right? Promote it on anywhere because you never know who's going to click it when you're when you post it on somewhere okay um, and as of this year search engines are now indexing facebook posts and tweets which means you can literally give yourself backlinks Right? If you go on your Facebook and you go on your Twitter and say, hey, I wrote this article about, um, you know, the, you know, a beginner's guide to living in Crescent Valley, you know, if that's the name of a neighborhood, right? If you post that on your Twitter and your Facebook, the search engines are going to see that link. So when people are searching for Crescent Valley neighborhood, uh, you might now show up. All right. And not only will people click on that link on your social media channels, and then that drives traffic to your website, which gets you more exposure, which helps you build relationships and build your reputation. But now those are also helping your SEO. Okay. So um, 
post it on all your social channels, and then take a look at your budget. Because the one unfortunate truth about Facebook uh, and Twitter and LinkedIn is they're so big now that it free does not work so well anymore. Okay, everyone used to go on Facebook and Twitter and be like, yeah, I can post content and get traffic and get views. And I don't know if you've looked at how many – that number that Facebook and Twitter and things share with how many people saw this post. That number has been going down over time for everybody unless you pay to boost your post, right? And that $5, right, might be – that little extra kick that your content needs to get in front of the target market that you want to be in front of so they click on it and then start engaging with your brand. Okay, So you do need to think about the budget that you want to put towards social media um, posting uh, because it's now needed because Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and LinkedIn are so big. Okay. Um, the other thing that uh, people don't realize is, is you don't have to only post things once, right? You can post things multiple times. On Twitter, you know, we post the same article in like seven different ways, you know, within seven different times within the span of one or two weeks. Because on Twitter, you know, things fall through the cracks real quick, right? On Facebook, not so much. I may repost an article uh, once every few months or once a year, okay? Um, but the cool thing is, if you have an evergreen article, you can repost that content uh, many different times, and then you want to actually post it at different times of day, right? Because think about your own social media habits. Don't you seem to have a kind of a habit and a routine, right? Every morning I check my Facebook, you know? Mid-afternoon I'm checking my Instagram, and at nighttime I'm checking this thing, right? So if you want to get in front of as many people as possible, you want to post the same article in that 6 to 8 a.m. time slot, in that 8 to 10 a.m. time slot, in that 11 to 2 time slot, in that 4 to 6 time slot, and that 8 to 10 p.m. time slot. Okay, Because again, people have routines and you want to make sure you get in front of them, all of them, as many people as possible. Okay. Um, and uh, as I said before, take that blog link that you have on your website and post it on other websites, social media websites, um, as many as you can. All right. That's the game. All right. Blast things out there. Okay. Finally, um, you know, you don't just want to mindlessly write content and promote it. You want to analyze it. Right. You want to be a smart marketer. Okay. The cool thing about Facebook and Twitter and a lot of these things is they have really good analytics, right? And if your back end of your website is is uh, WordPress, they're going to have some really good analytics for you too that can tell you what people like to read. When you're sharing content on your social media and you find out, wow, when I wrote about like restaurants, people seem to write a whole, care and view this article a whole lot more than when I'm writing about real estate properties and reports and analytics on, you know, buying trends. Like, you know, I think all of them who should hopefully realize that is people don't care about real estate all the time, right? And the good thing about content is you don't have to write about real estate um, to make it useful. You can write about the things that people care about on a daily basis. Um, and uh, the analytics will tell you uh, what people like. So try a bunch of different things out and then see uh, how many views they get. See how long people spend. See how many shares um, that your article gets. See how many likes and how many comments. And then start to look for patterns. Okay. Um, and then after a month, take a look to see, you know, if you were trying to target uh, homes for sale in um, or living in your neighborhood name, let's say financial district in Toronto, right? You say you wrote a, a guide on what's it like to live in the financial district in Toronto. Then you should go on, on Google a month later and type in financial district Toronto and see where your blog shows up. See if you can see it on the first five pages, right? There is some software out there um, uh, 
Another another one you might want to write down is something called SEO Power Suite. Uh, again, um, uh, this is something that we use at Parkbench. Uh, we do have to pay for it. Uh, you may not want to pay for it, um, but uh, there's other potentially free tools out there that tell you uh, where you're ranking. Um, so you can type in all the different keywords that you want to uh, rank for because you've written content about it, and then it will tell you, uh, is there a link um, from your website showing up on Google and where, right? What page, what rank, okay? Um, so analyze your content, readjust your strategy, and then keep doing it, all right? The cool thing is every piece of content does help. It's just a matter of how much. Okay, um, which is again one of the reasons why I love content marketing because you can't go wrong, right? Or you can spend a thousand dollars on flyers and literally get nothing and never get anything for it, right? Because once the flyer campaign is done, it is done, right? Whereas content, once it's up on your website, it is benefiting you forever. So I highly recommend people do it, and then don't worry if something sucks one time. You just laugh about it and try again, okay? So here are kind of the next steps uh, that I give to everybody. The first one is get started, okay? Just start. Do it. Um, and start learning, okay? Uh, spend some time. Say, like, this month, every time I read stuff online, I'm going to try and find stuff to read that has to do with creating good content, Right, because if you just spent a couple hours a week, you know, for a period of like a month, you're going to be a whole lot further along than your competition who's lazy. Okay, so start learning, become informed, become educated, and I hope this uh, webinar was a good start. All right, um, so look at your options now. Think about whether you want to do it yourself uh, as a realtor, whether you want to invest in your uh, assistant, your marketing person, or some professional to do it. Um, you know, I, as you know, people invest in you because they want a professional to list their house and they want a professional to help them buy a house. And so that is, again, why I do recommend that, pe that people do hire experts. They don't necessarily try to do it themselves. They should know how to do it. They should be informed and educated so they can provide input to the professionals they're working with. Um, but um, you are experts at selling houses and you can find experts out there at uh, doing content. Uh, Parkbench, we do uh, have content marketing services. So if you are looking for someone who knows how to do this, who has a track record of getting people on the first uh, page or two uh, for keywords, uh, we can do it. Um, and uh, we have really competitive pricing. Now, it's not cheap by any means uh, because having someone do the strategy, research the content, write the content, optimize the content, and promote the content, just think about how many hours that takes and think about how much you know people cost. Okay, It's not cheap, but it is a phenomenal investment because you only have to make that investment once to get the content piece on your site and then it benefits you forever right i highly recommend you engage in a content strategy so you at least have 52 pieces of content um, on your website that can be promoted year after year because then just like you made an investment to build your website now you have this content that you invested in that will last forever that you can re-promote for years and years and years and you don't have to keep investing in that content you don't have to keep investing in your website because once it's done it's done all right if you want to come talk to us to get it done uh, right um, and at an affordable price let us know send us an email after uh, my name is grant i appreciate your time um, if you have any questions uh, please write them down right now in the control panel and uh, we'll uh, have yourself a great Monday. Um, if you don't, stay in touch and uh, stay on the lookout for the next webinar that's coming um, to educate uh, realtors on all things to do with digital marketing. Thanks again. Anyone have any questions? Maybe I was good enough to actually cover everything. That is sweet. Let me check the chat box to see if there's anything there. Perfect. All right.
Have yourself a great Monday, everybody. Bye for now.